student just recently asked me how long it would take to fly to Mars and back. The same thing, I used Google to help me with this, and I said, well, how fast are you going? Right. I mean, and you can use Google to actually configure out how fast you'd have to be going to get to Mars and back in a year. I mean, it's, that's not that tricky to do mathematically. I was actually thinking about throwing it in your project. I thought that was a faster move because your project's been up for five weeks, and I don't want to change it now. So, wait, wait, wait. Starts with an A. Zanya. Zanya, go ahead, my friend. I was just going to ask if it was seven months. I heard it takes seven months to get there. Depends on how fast you're going. Well, yeah. Ah, but the question was, how fast do you have to go to get there and back in a year? That was that was the question. It ends up being, like I think it's like 32,000 miles of that's an hour. Faster, faster than a rocket can go, but twice as fast as a rocket has to go to escape the gravity of Earth. Which is interesting. I find that interesting that exactly, almost exactly twice as fast as it takes a rocket to get out of Earth is how fast you'd have to go for an entire year to get the Mars and back. Crazy. Crazy. Anyway, let's convert it. 200, can you guys see that little up there? 200 feet per 9.69 seconds in miles per hour, Oops. per hour. Let's see what this is. Just about 14 miles an hour. Now there's, there's a number and a unit I think we can understand. 14 miles per hour. 200 feet per 9.69 seconds is tricky. It's tricky because you have to, first of all, imagine 200 feet, which is tricky for us to think about, I think, what 200 feet would look like. It's two blue whales end to end. Does that help? Probably not. For some reason, I always, 100 feet is a blue whale. That doesn't really help me because I can't believe really how big a blue whale is. But two of them, and cover that in about 10 seconds. Okay. But 14 miles an hour. 14 miles an hour hopefully makes sense. Be a slow car moving through your neighborhood. One you probably honk at. So if I'm riding through your neighborhood, going 14 miles an hour and going on the road, I'm going back from work, thinking about getting a cup of coffee, stretching my arms out, pedaling down the road, tell her, hey, hippie. <laughs> However, if a policeman was trying to answer the question, how fast is Sean going at 200 feet? And he had the hair dryer point. Where, where's my 200 foot group? Where were you guys? My 200 foot group? Brittany, you have the hair dryer. You're the, as I come by. Right, so if Brittany's got the hair dryer pointing at me as I come by, would it read 14 miles per hour? No. Why? Faster. No. Why faster? Because you're at the end, and you had picked up your velocity. We use the end though, Amy. 200 feet. Oh. Why no, no, don't, don't, be don't, be, don't be derailed by me. I'm playing devil's advocate here. Don't be derailed by me. Go with your point. Is Brittany's hair dryer measuring? You're right, you're correct. Okay. Don't, 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 don't be derailed. Is Brittany's hair dryer measuring from zero seconds all the way down to, no. to no. no. So, was, jury, go. That means, Good. What Good that means is that you are going 14 miles an hour, like it's the same concept as the kids. It's know, exactly like, that same concept, yes. isn't it? Yeah, because what's happening is, is if you separated exactly how many feet you covered per second. Let's do that, shall we? Hang on. Yeah. Instead of how fast you're going. Thank you for a very good point. <laughs> if I do 200 divided by 9.69, I get just about 20.6 feet. In order for me to have an average of 14 miles per hour, that means I have to cover about 21 feet every second. Now you know by looking at the data, I wasn't doing that, was I? Look at the data again. I was not covering 21 feet per second. I covered two feet in the first second, just about six, then 10, then 14, then nine. Aha, now I'm above it. Then I started covering a lot more than it. I never once actually covered 21 feet in a second. Well, actually, I lied. I did do that at some point. I just don't know what second it happened in. But even if it doesn't what second it happened, it happened somewhere. I just don't know where. But that's also not what the hair dryer would be measuring on me. Yes. That's because the difference between what you guys just answered and what the hair dryer is measuring is the difference. And this is an important difference, I think. Actually, I don't think I know. Between average rate of change which we'll call AROC an instantaneous rate of change instantaneous rates of change 
which we call IROC. <laughs> yes. Being a child of the 80s, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to stick with this idea of average rate of change for a bit. Just for a bit. Just for a bit. Because I want to tie the two together. They are related, completely related. They've got a geometric component, which I want to get into. They've got an algebraic component, which I want to kind of get into, but not freak you guys out with. I want to go back to my, my graph here. What you guys just... Oh. Hang on. I think I just hung something up. I need my graph back on. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay. What you guys just calculated with the average rate of change for the whole trip, we'll call this number one. What you guys just calculated was this. The slope of that. That would be if I were traveling purely linearly, picking up 21 feet per every second. 21 feet per every second. Now clearly, clearly, when the curve is doing this, I'm not picking up 21 feet, I'm picking up less than 21 feet per second. And then over here, I'm picking up more than 21 feet per second. But the idea of analyzing the whole trip is on average, I was picking up 21 feet per second. But this is not the way a policeman tickets you. Although, back in, back in the early 90s to mid 90s, the New Jersey Turnpike, which I hope no, none of you ever have to drive on, there's a ticketing system, an actual ticketing system on the turnpike where you stop at a, at a toll booth and grab a ticket and the ticket is time stamped. And then you get off later on at a different exit and you give the, the person your ticket and you pay the toll for using the road. The police in New Jersey were using that to issue tickets based on the timestamps. Now check this out. What? So just make the math easy, make the math easy. Suppose it was 60 miles an hour on the Jersey Turnpike, which is pretty much what it is anyway. And suppose that exit one and exit two are 60 miles apart from each other. Okay, just to make the math easy. How long should it take you to get there if you're obeying the speed limit? 60 minutes or one hour. So what happened was, people would get a ticket, say at eight o'clock in the morning. If they got off at 8.55, that means they were speeding somewhere, somewhere along the line. They had to have been speeding because the average speed is above 60. It doesn't matter where or for how long they were doing it. The logic was, as you can, as you can imagine, the riots that ensued because of this. But I had friends that when they found out about it, I'm like, I'll fix that. And what they would do is they'd get on at exit one, speed to a rest stop, and then stop and take a smoke break for 20 minutes, and then drive to the exit. <laughs> like, you realize you're using more gas to do that than just yeah, driving 60, right? right? right. <laughs> so you can, the police have in the past used this idea, but that is not what the gun is doing. Well, I lied a little bit. It's kind of almost exactly what the gun is doing on a very, very small scale without tickets and without using Jersey Turnpike. Let's change the question now, okay? Because clearly this is too large a scope. Let's do a couple more average rates of change and then we're gonna super analyze, super analyze. Next question, let's get my average rate of change. Let's put this over there on the sideboard too. Not for the whole trip, but how about